We'll start reading from verse 17. Amen. Amen. Or for, for better clarification, let's start from verse 15. But the two verses we are going to concentrate on will be 17 and 18. And then we may move further if we have time to the end. Amen. Amen. But we are going to look particularly to verse 17 and 18. But we can start reading from verse 15. Ephesians chapter 1 verse, from verse 15, it says, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Okay. Verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward what who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places for above Far above. far above, excuse me, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in that which is to come. Amen. And had put all things under his feet Amen. and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him that feel it all in us. Amen. 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 What you have just read is like your will. A will that your father has written concerning you and me. Amen. Amen. And if we are able to understand what God has prepared, purpose, and planned for us. In fact, you cannot rest one single moment without wanting to always be in the presence of this, your great father, and in the midst of those who share the same body with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our problem is lack of wisdom, lack of revelation and our eyes not yet enlightened enough and so like we read there from verses 17 to 18 this is the prayer of this man of God that is sitting down here Trevor Gaga that the eyes of our the, that that uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, Amen. may give unto us the spirit of wisdom. Amen. I say that is his prayer because it is the prayer of every single minister of God. Amen. 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 The true minister of God. And even the prayer of those who are matured in the things of God. This is their prayer that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Take note of that. In the knowledge of him, our God. Amen? Amen. Amen. It is very important that we know God. Amen? Because if we don't know God... I'm not, I'm not trying to show my wife that what you are saying just now, I just copied it just a few minutes ago. God mm -hmm. bless you. To show... <laughs> The spirit, how, how the spirit, spirit works, amen. 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 
even when that when uh, sister started praying, you could see the flow of the spirit of God. Amen. It doesn't really matter whether people are two or three, you know. There is power among the children of God. Amen. Amen. It's just that our eyes are not open. That's why you see people, they don't know, should I be here, should I be there? What moment to be here, one moment to be there. They, they, is, the whole problem is here. And this is the heart cry, my heart cry, the heart cry of the pastor, the heart cry of so many that really know what it means to have God as our Father. Amen. 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 So, Apostle Paul prayed. And we want to know for whom he was praying. Because many times when we see Ephesians, we think that the prayer is for people who lived far away before we, we were ever thought of being born. But you can see that the prayer he prayed how many years ago is still being you know, offered before the throne of God daily for not just those who have gone before us, but for us who are here today. Amen. Amen. So we want to see. Who was he praying for? Let's look at verse 1. Amen? Amen. So that you see how related the word of God is. Verse 1 says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, you see, not by the will of men, to the saints which are at Ephesus. You see that everything is in the present tense. Because our God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Amen? Amen. So saints who have passed to the other realm that we're living in Ephesus. And he goes on to include us and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Me and you. Amen. Amen. This prayer is still going on for me and you. That is why today you can see these few of us that are here. Amen. Amen. It is because of that prayer that you are here. Amen. Amen. And God wants to open your eyes today to wisdom and revelation Amen. in the things of God. Amen. Amen. Now, I want us to see something. He says, when he started the uh, reading from uh, verse 15, let's look at verse 15. It was the Spirit of God speaking or writing through Apostle Paul. He said, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith, in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. You will bear with me if you have gone made a journey of churches. If you have made a journey of churches like me, I have done. Many times in these churches, what is preached is that all you need is to have faith in God and to love God and love your neighbor. Amen? Amen. That is their preaching. That is what they are always emphasizing. Have faith because without faith it is impossible to please God. So many of us, once we hear that having faith, we think that once we have expressed faith in God, that is all we need. And once we can struggle to love, you know, our uh, Christian life is complete because we are exercising faith in God, we are loving God and loving our neighbor. Amen. So if that was sufficient, for us, for our living as children of God, then what we are looking at in verses 17 and 18 would not have been necessary. What have I said? In the 17 and 18 will not be necessary. Why would it not have been necessary? We are looking at only the, the faith and the love of the church. I give thanks to God. Amen. Clap for yourselves, please. <laughs> Paul says he has heard of their faith, the faith of these saints, just like I hear of your faith in God, your love for one another. But to show us that it is that faith and love, they are not enough. And you can see from our lives, the way our lives as believers are, that faith and love is not enough. Something else is needful to make us actually show forth the glory of being children of God. Amen? Amen. And so, Apostle Paul, Pastor Trevor, and many saints of God are praying that you and I and other children of God can have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge 
of God. Amen. Amen. Because when that happens, you know, we will gain a lot. Amen. Amen. Now, we can begin to ask ourselves, what do they mean by this, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God? You see, wisdom simply knows, means understanding spiritual things. Because many of us have suffered by understanding the things of God with our natural mind. Nobody emphasized by telling us that the things of God, anything that God says, if you try to understand it with your natural mind, it will not benefit you. It is when you understand the things of God with the mind of the Spirit that this thing will become of benefit to us. Amen? Amen. And so, when it talks of God giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the point is that there is a desire in God that we understand things spiritually. Amen? Amen. But we can also understand things spiritually and then the spiritual things remain covered, veiled to us. So revelation is revealing, taking the cover out of those spiritual things so that we can see them as they really are. When spiritual things are open, revealed, uncovered, at the same time, the things that are inside us, which are against God, will be as Pose. This is the importance of having the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It is not the intention of God for the things of God to be revealed while those things that are in us that are not of God remain there. Because they are the very things that are covering the things of God. So when the things of God are open, covered and revealed, the things that are not of God are exposed and they are dealt with. By the time we see the things that are not of God exposed because of the revelation of the things of God, we can now agree with God because we are seeing the evil that those things that cover Christ do. So we can now readily agree with our God and say, God, this indeed needs to go. Because it is because of these things that I'm being hindered in my Christian walk with you. Amen? Amen? So you see the very importance of, you know, praying this prayer. And pray not just for yourself, but pray for your brother and your sister. Because you know that without your brother and your sister, you are incomplete the way God wants us to be. God is not here to build an individual Christian. God is here to build a body, a corporate body, that has the life of his son, which will eventually, because the life of the son of God is the life of God. God is working through his son to bring this very one life among this corporate body of Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. So when you know that which is veiled, and that which is not supposed to be of God exposed, you cannot cooperate with God. But when you don't know, how can you cooperate with God and how can our lives be transformed? This is the, one of the importance of wisdom and revelation. Amen. Amen. Verse 17 says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. These things are very important. Amen. Even if we just look at these two verses alone. Later, when we are looking at the rest of the verses, you will see what we are missing every day as children of God. Because our eyes are closed, the things that belong to us are veiled, and we are not able to see, and so we have a problem. We think that the problem is with God. And that's why when we start prayer, we are hitting our legs, stamping our hand, doing this and that. It's because we don't know what we already have that is there. Amen. Amen. So verse 18 says, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. Now I want us to quickly go to the book of John and look at verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 12, please. And let us read it together, if you are there. John. 
John chapter 8, 12. What does it say? Then start Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. I want all of us to be looking at our Bible. Eh? I said, even if it's two this, two, this, just these two verses, we'll stop and continue some other time. Yes? Let's just start again. Then, then Jesus spoke to them again, again, saying to them, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Have you seen that? <coughs> the reason. We are praying for wisdom and revelation. It's so that what we may, our eyes may be open to see what we have in God. Christ. Jesus is saying that if you believe in Him really and you follow Him, you will never be in darkness. Amen. So it's a matter of choice. You can choose to be in darkness or you can choose not to be. Amen. Amen. So, one of the prayers in verse 18 is saying, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. To be enlightened is to have light. Amen. Amen. Why do we need light? It goes on to tell us why we are praying for wisdom, for revelation, for enlightened lives. The light. The enlightened eyes. First of all, after wisdom and revelation, we are two in the knowledge of God. So, wisdom and revelation, our eyes being enlightened, is for the knowledge of God. But I seek to put it in a better way to include us. It now says that we may know, that's, that's verse 18, what is the hope of his calling? We have a calling from God, amen? amen. If you don't have a calling from God, you will not be here. If you go to read from the, uh, verse 3 of this chapter 1, it tells us that before even the foundation of the world, God has called me, God has called you, God has chosen us, God has selected us. Amen? Amen. Amen. To be holy and to be without blame, blameless, spotless. That's the design of God, that's the plan of God. Amen. Amen. And then from that uh, verse uh, 3 to verse 14, which we cannot read, but if you get to your houses, try to read. Because now with the little explanation that the Spirit of God is giving us, when you read, you can follow. Amen. Amen. So God has called us. The purpose for which is he called us is so that we can be holy. There is only one that is holy and is God. So when he talks of being holy, he knows what to do to make us, to put himself inside us so that we can be seen the way uh, we, we see God. Amen? Amen? So that we can be holy and without blame. Not only that, but he predestinated us to be sons. You see that? God the Father, this was his plan. This was his calling. In the midst of that, you see the Son bringing redemption and everything to line up with them. And then you see also the work of the Holy Spirit. The three in one God working together for me, for you. Amen. And my time is my time up. Okay. So, this is our calling. If you want to know your calling, you go and read from verse 3 to 14. Amen. Amen. If you don't have wisdom and revelation, these things will just be shallow to you. When people are talking, you think you know. Yes. But it takes, takes a deeper knowledge than what you think to know, to know these things. Because when you know these things, nobody will tell you to be where brethren are. This, all these worldly vain things, which we are going to look at again from this book of Ephesians the next time. When we are told not to walk like we used to walk before, there should be a change. The world what is working right now in the vanity of their minds. And many of us that are believers don't know that we are still working in the vanity of our minds. You can see from this gathering today, there are things that should not, for any reason, if you know who you are, compete with you are this thing for God. They should be secondary, no matter what. They should be secondary. But we are still, without knowing, walking in the vanity of our minds. 
you know. But we are not looking at that today. We are just concentrating on this wisdom revelation and the eyes of our understanding being open that we may know our calling. Because when we know our calling and we know that we have one life and one spirit, nobody will pull you to do Christianity. Amen. 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 And you will know the right place to be. Amen. God bless us. Amen. Amen. So the first thing why we pray for wisdom and revelation and all these things is so that we may know the hope of our calling. Amen. Amen. It is very important that we know the hope of our calling. And another thing, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense. Before I come to the hope of his calling, I just want us, in this same Ephesians, let's look briefly at chapter 2, verse, uh, chapter two, verse 20. Just see what is written there. I hope I get the verse right. So that you see that the word of God is one. Amen. Amen. Let me see. Ephesians chapter 2. Where is it? No, no, no. Ephesians chapter 2, where it says that before we were without God. Okay, uh, 2.12, please. 2.12. Let's look at it together. 2.12. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. It says that, and that at that time, ye were without Christ. Being alien, being alien there is, it means being strangers, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. That is, we were not God's people. Amen? So we were like strangers to anything that concerns God. From the covenant of the promise, the, pro, the covenant that God made, you know, with his people. Having no hope. Have you seen that? We were a people without hope. But that's not the situation now. Through the revelation of those verses, we know that we are a people that is full of hope. And we can open quickly so that we strengthen our faith for that. It's not as if you don't know this thing. But the more we look at this thing, the more Christ's life in us grows. Amen? Amen. So I want us to look at First Corinthians. Uh, First Corinthians. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Because it says there that Christ himself is our hope. Have you seen that? 27. Colossians 1. 27. Yes. To whom God would like, would make known that what is the riches of the glory of his of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm saying that if God can be, and he is merciful to us, and he opens gives us this spirit of wisdom and, and revelation and open enlighten our eyes that is our spiritual eyes to see what we have in god we were a people without hope mm. but today it says that christ that is in us is the hope of glory you see many times when you hear christ is in you christ is in you it enters here and goes out because wisdom and revelation and not come and we are praying very seriously. And as you hear these words today, you are going to join in the prayer. Because we don't want to be people tossed here and there by the cunning this thing of human beings. Because they know we don't know. They just toss us here and there. They will tell you prayer is the answer. They will tell you this is the answer. Living out Christ. Prayer cannot be more important than Christ or any other thing. If our focus is on Christ and we have spiritual understanding of Christ, we have this Christ revealed, that is open up, and we are able to see Christ, how he's seated inside us here. And then those things that are going against Christ are exposed in us, all our wickedness, all those fleshly and carnal things, we are able to put them off, give Christ the whole chance. And we begin to live a very beautiful and a very happy and a very satisfying life. I have been on earth more than all of you. I tell you one thing. There is nothing I have not tasted. But the one thing I came to see was that none of them, I thank God for his mercy. None of them gave me the satisfaction I thought I could have. 
from them except Christ. You can ask those who know me. I had my cousin there. She grew up with me like a little baby. I was working that time that they just started local government. I saw what they call money. If you talk of fame, you know when you have money, people follow you. Yes. I saw all those things. But no satisfaction. You think you want a husband. Sometimes a husband will be your greatest problem if you don't know Christ. If you know Christ, if your eyes are open to know Christ, when you marry, your marriage will be paradise on earth. Amen. Because understanding everything about life comes out of Christ. But we are not able to see it because our eyes are veiled. The prayer is that let this veil be taken off. So that all you think about me and I think of you is nothing but goodness. In the innermost part of my, my house, I'm praying for everyone. I can only do that because of Christ. I pray, not shabby prayer, not nonsense prayer. You understand? Not nonsense prayer. Prayer to do you real good. Prayer that you don't go through the path that many people have gone through. And that if you are already there, that you come out. God will help us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So even if you can't take away anything, take these two things. That it is not enough to have faith it is not enough to have love. There is a deeper thing that we need, and that is wisdom and revelation. The eyes of our understanding being open. Because enlightened. Because if you do, I tell you the truth. I'm not boasting. There's nothing you need which seems so impossible with physical eyes that you can have. I came here, I didn't have one cent in this Italy. But God had mercy on me to know what it means to rely on God. And I've not missed a thing. So when I tell you, hold on to Jesus, I'm not talking like somebody who has not experienced it. I've experienced it. God will help us. Amen. Amen. So what should be our prayers? These three, these verses that we have read, let's go back and look at them, please. And then we'll close. Let's read them from verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him not in the knowledge of any other thing but in the knowledge of God Amen, Amen. the eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know what is the hope of our calling Amen, Amen. we will finish by mentioning the other one for the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense when you hear the riches, when you hear God's glory, all he's saying is the expression of God. How God expresses himself. How God shows himself through me and you. How he brings his, himself out. How he reveals himself through me and you. Amen? Amen. But here he's talking about the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints. What that means is that what will show forth is what God has already worked of himself inside me and you that becomes his inheritance god does not inherit that which belongs to natural life or to me and you natural people he inherits only that which he has worked into me and you but he can only work when you give him the authority the permission to work in you and you cannot give him that permission to work in, in you unless you have the spirit of wisdom, of revelation, of your eyes being enlightened. Amen? Amen. Amen.